Good morning, and welcome to the fifth Sunday after Easter worship service online. Um, we hope that you uh, have had a wonderful day so far, a wonderful morning as we begin. I do have some announcements to share with you this morning. First, uh, the church council has met, and there was a notice uh, that was sent out to everybody and the letter pretty much said that we are as a church council, um, certainly with having our health of the people of our congregation, health and safety of the people of our congregation in mind, um, have decided that we're going to wait till phase two of the governor's plan before we begin to open. So the, we're anticipating that that will be somewhere in the middle of June. So we will refrain from having worship until... June 8th, um, or about that time or after that time. Um, we really want to make sure that we do the things to ensure our safety of all the people that are here and that we do it right. Uh, we do not want a situation where anyone, anyone is at risk by coming to church. So we're, we're going to be working on that, and that is the time frame that we think we need um, and certainly we, we need to see more information about how the virus is growing in our community as well. Today we are going to start something new. We will have a Zoom coffee hour at 1030. So you can zoom in on your paper copy. There is a Zoom um, ID, a meeting ID number for you and password that you can just, you know, uh, go online, go into your browser, type in Zoom, and type in this ID, and away you go. If you are not all that online fluid, don't fluing, fluent, don't worry about it. It really is quite simple. Um, and if you need any help, certainly um, you can call me or call someone uh, during the week. Certainly you can call me if you need uh, some more assistance, but there are lots of people that will be willing to help. You just call somebody and they can work you through it real, real, real quick. So don't be afraid. And um, I think it would be really great to have a couple conversations after church. Maybe we can talk about the sermon, talk about what we're doing and those kinds of things. Also, we will have next week a drive-in communion service. Now, that will be that after we, we would do a video, and after you see the video, hopefully, if you're using a 930 time frame, that would be great. Then you can hop in your car, come out here, bring your own communion elements, you know, your own bread um, and grape juice or wine if you want, but we are asking you to be careful with that. Um, bring them here. Um, you can stand outside your car or in front of the car. I will be on the the porch in the back, and I will provide the words of institution, and you can have communion. We're doing everything we can to be socially distanced. We're trying to be safe and at the same time have the presence of God amongst us and with us in the Holy Sacrament of Holy Communion. So if you want to participate in that, um, just come on by. If there's lots of people here, the service will probably only take about 10 minutes. We'll do another one. We'll keep doing it until everybody has received uh, the sacrament the way that they want to. Prayer concerns. Uh, we have some additional prayer concerns, and as you know, some of these don't get into the prayers of the church because we record things a little bit earlier, but we pray for uh, Helga Rashton, Rashton, who is in the hospital, um, and also we pray for Amanda Ryan and her family at her passing, um, the family of Adriana uh, P Prince, um, also at um, her death this, this week. We pray for the Valentine family and the passing of Stephanie's mom, Elizabeth Alderman Lee. Um, may our Lord grace them all with his comfort and his love. So with that, let us begin our worship service with a confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow in the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
let us confess our sin. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead to sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you all, we all have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Dear Father, source of life, we thank you for your continual care for us. Help us to be fruitful branches of your son's vine. 
Help us to seek ways that we can be your presence in the world and bear more fruit. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Reading from the fourth chapter of 1 John, beginning at the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Here ends the reading. From you comes my praise in the great, in the great congression. My vows are paid before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn it to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall, blow, shall bow all who go down into the dust, and I shall live for him. Prosperity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord, and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the words that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in a vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from you, you can, apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever wish, whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. I'm going to do the children's serving standing up today because I have some things to show you. Jesus says that we are, he is the vine and we are the branches. And he says that he is going to chop off the bad branches and prune the good branches so that they will produce more fruit. I was a hundred years old before I realized what pruning was. And I'm not really a hundred years old, but yeah, I was a pretty, I was older, and I never understood what pruning, it sounded like it was cutting, it sounded like it was hurting. But so let me show you, and if you are, you're any adults out there, and you're really into gardening, I'm probably doing this all wrong, but the, I'm just trying to make a point very simply. So you have a branch that is like this branch, as you can see, it's pretty bare, you know, it's dead, you have to break it, yeah, you know, and this branch might still be stuck to the to the vine, and you know, you would sit there and say, "There's no growth coming out of that, so we'll just cut it off where there's life back in here somewhere, and chop it, and that will pro- allow the bush to to grow out of the place where it was chopped off, and and go. And this, I mean, there's no life in this whatsoever, so it's not going anywhere. It's not doing anything, and that would be the bad branch. And then you have a branch like this that's a good branch, a healthy branch. You see some, there were flowers on it when I cut it. This is a branch of a tree. I don't know what it is particularly. It's not certainly not a grapevine. But you can see, if you look real close, that there are some holes in it. Um, there are some branches in it that aren't. See one up in here? I'm trying to get this so you can see this. Oh, one up in here. See, there's nothing on here. So pruning it would come down to here and... Taking that off, up here's another branch that has nothing on it. Let's see. There it is. See it? Okay, we'll take that one off too. And we'll take this one, this one. Let's see where it is. See if you can see this. See it? There's nothing on that. See that branch here? There's nothing here. We'll take care of that one. And then down here, we'll take care of that one. Now, it looks like we're, you know, we're hurting the branch. We're making less branches on it. But we're only touching the bad ones off. But right here, let's see, I can get this, right here, oops, right there. See that little knob? That's a place where new growth can come out of on the branch. So by creating those little knobs, you create opportunities for new growth. And that's what pruning is. And that's what Jesus is talking about. He's saying, you're like this. He's happy. You're growing fruit. You have some things going on that are really good. But he's going to come along and help us or help you as something that like this to produce more fruit by taking all the bad stuff away and allowing new growth to come. So what's that really mean to us? It really means to us that there's always potential for new growth. There's always potential for us to do new things and good things in the name of Jesus. There's always things we can do. And sometimes there's bad things that go on, like the virus and things like that, and we still have opportunities to do good things 
in the name of Jesus. And it's important that we do that because Jesus wants us to do that. That's why he's pruning us. He wants to make us better. He wants to make us bear more fruit. So with that, let us say our prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for saving us and loving us and help us by pruning us so that we may be better in producing more fruit and better in doing the things that you want us to do. This we ask in your name. Amen. Thanks. Let us pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, you are the vine and we are the branches. Help us to be your hands and feet. Help us to be those branches that reach out into the world. Help us to be strengthened by your love and grace that comes through the vine, but also help us to bear the fruit that you want in the world that we're in. We know there's many things that are not the way we want them to be, especially today. But help us to persevere, but not only persevere, but to share the goodness and grace that you have given us and shown to us, to those that are around us. This we ask in your name. Amen. Once again, Jesus uses a very common item in the lives of his contemporary to relate the them to God. He talks about a vine, and in the Palestine region, because of its rocky soil and its morning moisture, olive trees and grapevines covered the local hillsides everywhere. You and me, we look at wine as an adult dinner drink, but in Jesus' day it was used to purify and disinfect water. They would mix wine and water together, and that would kill the bacteria that was in the water. So wine was really a necessity and a staple in everyone's household. And when we think of it that way, the vine becomes more than just a grapevine. The vine is a sustainer of life and pre prevents sickness. Jesus is saying he is the vine. He is the sustainer of life. He is the staple in everyone's life. And while he is saying that, he is also saying that his influence grows out into the branches and hopefully produce fruit. But if the branch doesn't produce fruit, the father comes along and removes it. But if the branch does produce fruit, he will prune it and it will, but it will produce much more fruit. E Gad. This sounds like if you don't work for God, it will cut you off cut you out of his life. But I really don't understand this as some sort of heavenly threat to do God's will, really. I don't think of Jesus saying, hey, if you don't bear fruit, so now I'm going to cut you off. I see it as more of a person who is not fruitful and is already cut off from the richness of the life-giving, growing vine even though they are still physically connected. After all, the branch is connected, yet it bears no fruit. Something is causing it not to bear fruit. For some reason, it is not getting the life that from the vine already. And the cutoff is to make the lifelessness complete, but it is already there. The branch that does not produce fruit Notice, or excuse me, the branch that does produce fruit, notice what happens to it. It is pruned. Pruning is to cut off the parts that do not bear fruit and put the vine in a better position to grow more fruit. So, we have two possibilities. A non-fruit branch and a fruit branch. The non-fruit branch is cut off and removed, and the fruit branch is cut and trimmed of all its weak spots so that it will bear more fruit. The difference is not one is cut off and one isn't. It is where the cut is made and who is saved. So, 
Which branch are you? Are we the saved branch being pruned? If you are listening to this video, if you are some way part of the community of Jesus Christ, you are a fruit-bearing branch. But at the same time, you and I probably have places that could bear much fruit. In the last couple of weeks, we've all been impacted by the COVID-19 virus. It caught our community off guard. We are a church community that flourishes and building connections between people and between people and God. We are a community that spreads the word of, word of God and builds up each other in worship. We have programs for family and children to make those connections to each other and to God. We have fellowship events that do that very same thing. But if, with the moratorium on large gatherings, we can't do that. But we have been, we have adjusted. We are doing this video series service. We are producing children's programs online. We are trying to maintain our connectedness by having as many people involved in service, every worship service that we produce. And we've all benefited by what we've created. But to be honest, we have been caught in another way and we haven't yet responded. Well, as a church, we have not found a way to be a church in our support of our community during these rough times. We have not found how to be pruned to produce more fruit for Jesus. Our conference of Lutheran pastors, all the Lutheran pastors in the area, had a Zoom meeting with the bishop this week, and she said that Jesus calls each of the pastors to lead in our time and place. God called us to this situation. God called us to this virus. And while she was thinking, while she was speaking, I was thinking, I didn't sign up for this. But you know what? I did. I I, I didn't. I don't get to choose the conditions of which I get to serve. Our Lord. Does that same thing apply to you? Perhaps it does. Some people have made masks. Some people have painted encouraging signs on the rocks. Some people have been making phone calls to people who are shut in. I have no idea what we can do to help the people in Leesburg as a church, to be quite honest. But I want to help out. And people have contacted me that they want to help out and do something. They want to be God's hands and feet for the people in need, which may be our neighbor or maybe someone else that lives here in Leesburg. And our help may be life and death for them, literally. So I invite you, can we figure something out? Can we find out what God wants us to do? After all, we have lots of time on our hands. And as the best I can tell, this virus isn't going to go away anytime soon. So here's just some brainstorming ideas. Is it enough that the local food pantry is on the other side of town? How can we help shut-ins? How can we increase contact by being physically distant? How can we help hospital workers? In this time of stress, people come back to church. They're talking about this now being mental health issues. How can we be present to them with Sunday worship stop? I don't know. I really don't know what the answers are. But I do know that there are or will be needs that we can meet in the name of Jesus Christ. I do know those needs will not come to us. There is a niche out there for us. And I don't know, I don't know what Jesus wants or how he wants to prune us so that we can bear more fruit. Maybe we can talk about that at our first 1030 coffee hour Zoom meeting this morning. Or you can write and text me. But we gotta get something going. We've, got, we've done a great job in adapting to the situation and keeping our community connected. Maybe we can do this too. So let's abide in Jesus. Let's figure this out. This virus is horrible in so many ways. In the name of Jesus, we may rise, may we rise up to the challenge it brings to our church.
please. We care as friends. We love as family. We serve as Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We, we believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the, the giver, giver of life, who proceeds from, from the Father and the Son. And the Son. With the, the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. And he has spoken through the prophets. prophets. We, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. church. We acknowledge we one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life the world, world to come. come. Amen. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Connect us, God of the vine. Create in us a community of lasting and mutual support in faith of you and help us to share the love we receive from you with those around us that need to see it and feel it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurture us, God of love, as we remember the love and kindness bestowed on us by our mothers, who are representatives of your love and grace. Watch over them now and protect them as they protect us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, to recognize that we are part of something that is bigger than ourselves. Be with our national leaders that they may work together for the benefit of people within their borders, but also for the benefit of people who are fellow world citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us, powerful God, and help us all have a common mission to strategically muster our resources to effectively fight off the virus and its effects quickly and effectively with minimal casualties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mend us, O God of justice, as we struggle with the news of a black man, Ahmud Arbery, who was shot and killed while on a jog. Be with his family as they grieve and help our nation and our people to see that our rights are for all people and that justice is the same regardless of race. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens, especially Helga Rathjen, who was hospitalized. 
Larry Grant, who will have surgery, and anyone else we name in our hearts or out loud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life as we remember Elizabeth Alderman Lee, mother of Stephanie Valentine, and Amanda Ryan, a lifelong friend of Mary Samuels. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us our day, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we give, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but from, deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hello, fellow branches. May we go out into the world to bear more fruit for Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We share as friends, we love as family, and we serve as Christ. We care as friends, we love as family, and we serve as Christ. We care as friends, we love as family, and, and we, we serve, serve as, as Christ. Christ. Washed us in the tide, flowing from his wounded side, Alleluia. 